1964 and 1965 was a very trying couple of years for Enzo Ferrari and his relationship with the FIA. In 1964, they had already rejected the mid-engine 250 LM for homologation purposes as a GT Ferrari. For the 65 season ahead, Enzo was fast running out of options, so he turned to his all-new 275 GTB. The 275 GTB was revolutionary. It had an all-new chassis, that the basis of which, the design, continued right through to the Daytona. It had a 3.3 litre V12, and it was the first Ferrari on the road to feature independent rear suspension. Added to this, it had a transaxle for the first time, which meant that it had the gearbox and the axle as one unit located at the rear of the car, which really helped it have near perfect weight distribution. The design of a 275 GTB was one of a classical Ferrari style. Soon after this model was released, the, the later models went in a slightly different direction, but it was a true soft design with covered headlights, sweeping curves, vents, and really was, for many people, the ultimate GT Ferrari of the 60s. While many road spec 275s were raced in period, such as 06653, the black short nose we sold in 2020, the factory also produced three categories of purpose-built competition 275s. Initially, four ultra-special competizioni specialis were built, but those two were swiftly rejected by the FIA, as they were viewed to be too far removed from the production car. Probably in hindsight, the right move, given the Acuri Frankerchamp example, finished third overall at Le Mans that year, completing the podium lockout for the Prancing Horse in what would be their last overall win to date with the 250LM at Le Mans. Soon after the FIA's swift rejection of the Specialis, Enzo Ferrari authorised the production and manufacture of 10 very special cars, and this is just one of them. These have become commonly referred to these days as Series 1 GTBCs or 7000 Series chassis number cars, but the official nomenclature at the time was Competizioni Clienti, and it was exactly that, a competition car for private clients of Ferrari. It was based on the short nose, but one really special feature that was unique to these 10 cars was the all aluminium bodywork. We know that later on long noses were available with aluminium coachwork, but these, it was only this 10 car series that featured that body. Externally, there are two big giveaways that this car is a GTBC Series 1 or a Competizione Clienti car. One is the, the ducts or the vents in the rear wings that are very of the 250 GTO 64 series cars. And secondly, is this outside fuel filler in the cell panel. Now this is a very important point because traditionally a 275 GTB would have the fuel tanks in the bottom of the boot at the back of the car. But these 10 cars had a one-off special fuel tank that was vertical behind the rear wheels and sat above the transaxle, which was key for weight distribution and an absolute hint towards its racing pedigree. This example is one of just 10 Series 1 alloy body 275 GTBCs built. Originally supplied in Rosso Chiaro over Nero, we can see from the history file for the car that it was ordered new by Renzo Sinibaldi from the factory in May 1965. After testing was complete, the car was registered new in Rome and purchased by Sinibaldi's wife. The car made its competition debut in March the following year and on its first outing finished fourth in class. For the next two events, it finished first in class on both occasions, and Cinebaldi finished third in that year's Italian GT Championship. A fantastic number of photos offer a rare insight into the period competition of this car. The roads were lined with spectators, and this was clearly a well thought of GT Championship. For 1967, the car moved to its second keeper, who campaigned it extensively, as Cinebaldi had replaced his Series 1 car with a later Series 2 car. Evidently handy behind the wheel, the second owner rarely finished in anything other than first in class with just a couple of lower positions, although still always very much on the podium. In 1968, the car retired from racing and was sold to the USA. Since then, it's seen contemporary race history in the early 2000s, being at the Le Mans Classic, Goodwood and other events such as that. 
today sits in largely as it would have left the factory trim once again. When spending so much time with all these different cars that we have through our doors at DK, I'm often asked the question, if you could only have one, what would it be? And usually I struggle to answer that and answer, well, there's just too many to list and it depends what I'm doing and where I'm going. But if I had to answer that question, I think that one of these could be the answer. It's a true competition car, 1965 build dates are highly eligible, five-speed gearbox, independent suspension all round, aluminium body, one of only 10 built, race history and period. This could probably be it. 